My holy vision sees all things as pure. My holy vision sees all things as pure. That's Lesson 263 in A Course in Miracles Workbook for Students from the original edition here on September the 20th of 2022. My holy vision sees all things as pure. Father, your mind created all that is. Your spirit entered into it. Your love gave life to it. And would I look upon what you created as if it could be made sinful? I would not perceive such dark and fearful images. A madman's dream is hardly fit to be my choice instead of all the loveliness with which you blessed creation, all its purity, its joy, and its eternal quiet home in you. And while we still remain outside the gate of heaven, let us look on all we see through holy vision and the eyes of Christ. Let all appearances seem pure to us, that we may pass them by in innocence and walk together to our Father's house as brothers and the holy sons of God. <laughs> My holy vision sees all things as pure. I'm sitting here on the banks of Lake Lenexa. I, um, I, I'm up here to uh, see my daughter Tabitha and her new husband Dustin get married. The Hatches, congratulations. Of course, I'm making this recording a couple days before they actually get married. So... Um, to actually get married on the 17th, but today is uh, the 20th. Okay, let's go take a look at uh, our text reading, and we're ready for chapter 26, the transition, and it. let's start in paragraph 59, and we'll read that the rest of that page. Uh, this is uh, section eight in review of principles and we left off in paragraph 60 yesterday so we'll start in 59 sin is belief attack can be projected outside the mind where the belief arose here is the firm conviction that ideas can leave their source made real and meaningful and from this error does the world of sin and sacrifice arise this world is an attempt to prove your innocence while cherishing attack. Its failure lies in that you still feel guilty, though without understanding why. Effects are seen as separate from their source and seem to be beyond you to control or to prevent. What is thus kept apart can never join. I, I wanted to bring our attention just a moment to this idea that this world is an attempt to prove your innocence while cherishing attack. Its failure lies in that you still feel guilty, though without understanding why. <laughs> you know, whenever we see through the eyes of uh, sin, well, we're going to feel guilty and we won't understand why. Can you, can you think back through years where you went through a lot of pain, and but you didn't, you, you may not call it guilt, but you, and you didn't understand why? Well, maybe we're coming into more understanding now and we realize that it's the vision of Christ that gives us healing and freedom, you know, to see things the way Jesus see, saw things or sees things. I, I love that little WWJD, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus think? What would Jesus see? Well, that's looking at the world through the eyes of Christ where we free ourselves from uh, the perception of sin and guilt and hell. <laughs> Paragraph 60. Cause and effect are one, not separate. God wills you learn what always has been true, that he created you as part of him, and this must still be true because ideas leave not their source. Such is creation's law, 
that each idea the mind conceives but adds to its abundance never takes away. This is as true of what is idly wished as what is truly willed. Because the mind can wish to be deceived, but cannot make it what it is not, and to believe ideas can leave their source is to invite illusions to be true without success. For never will success be possible in trying to deceive the Son of God. 61. The miracle is possible when cause and consequence are brought together, not kept separate. The healing of effect without the cause can merely shift effects to other forms. And this is not release. God's Son could never be content with less than full salvation and escape from guilt. God's Son could never be content with less than full salvation and escape from guilt. For otherwise he still demands that he must make some sacrifice and thus denies that everything is his, unlimited by loss of any kind. A tiny sacrifice is just the same in its effects as is the whole idea of sacrifice. If loss in any form is possible, then is God's Son made incomplete and not himself. Nor will he know himself nor recognize his will. He has forsworn his Father and himself and made them both his enemies in hate. 62. Illusions serve the purpose they were made to serve, and from their purpose they derive whatever meaning they seem to have. God gave to all illusions that were made another purpose that would justify a miracle, whatever form they took. In every miracle all healing lies, for God gave answer to them all as one, and what is one to him must be the same. If you believe what is the same is different, you but deceive yourself. What God, what God calls one will forever be one. What God calls one will be forever one, not separate. His kingdom is united. Thus it was created, and thus will it ever be. 63. The miracle but calls your ancient name, which you will recognize because the truth is in your memory. The miracle but calls your ancient name, which you will recognize because the truth is in your memory. And to this name your brother calls for his release and yours. Heaven is shining on the Son of God. Deny him not, that you may be released. Each instant is the Son of God reborn, until he chooses not to die again. In every wish to hurt, he chooses death instead of what his Father wills for him. In every wish to hurt, he chooses death instead of what his Father wills for him. Yet every instant offers life to him because his Father wills that he should live. In the last paragraph we'll read today, 64. In crucifixion is redemption laid. For healing is not needed where there is no pain or suffering. Forgiveness is the answer to attack of any kind. <laughs> Forgiveness is the answer to attack of any kind. So is attack deprived of its effects. And hate is answered in the name of love. To you to whom it has been given to save the Son of God from crucifixion and from hell, and death, all glory be forever. For you have power to save the Son of God because his Father willed that it be so. And in your hands does all salvation lie, to be both offered and received as one. That last couple sentences, you have power to save the Son of God because his Father willed that it be so. And in your hands, does all salvation lie, 
to be both offered and received as one. Okay, let's go take a look now at our associated reading with today's lesson. Our lesson today is, My Holy Vision Sees All Things as Pure. And the associated reading is, What is the Body? And as you're turning there, and I still encourage you to put your lesson on a card, that way if you forget during the day, you can pull it out and say, Oh yeah, my holy vision sees all things as pure. Um, I've, I've been telling you a little bit about some raspberries out of the uh, ediblelandscaping.com. Well, here's another one called the Wineberry Raspberry, and it's a, Ruf, a Rubus Phonacolossus. It might be Phonacolossus, uh, the, the, the Latin name for it. And it says that of these wine berries, they were they're originally from Japan. They have naturalized in the eastern United States. A summertime treat, fruiting after the spring raspberry and before the fall ones. Very acclimated, will fruit in the shade. Now there's a nice thing for permaculturists that are trying to build, um, a, what do we call them, the forest gardens. It, you're looking for some plants that'll fill in that niche that will still produce fruit that's in the shade and the understory. Well, this might be one. Uh, will fruit in the shade, high flavor, excellent fresh, good in zone six through eight, space in six foot circles, height five foot and arching. They produce their berries on the two year wood. And that's your wine berry raspberry. It's also a red raspberry. Okay, let's take a look. It's not your uh, Rubus uh, Ideas though. Okay, now let's go take a look at our associated reading with My Holy Vision Sees All Things as Pure. What is the body? The body is a fence the Son of God imagines he has built to separate parts of his self from other parts. It is within this fence he thinks he lives to die as it decays and crumbles. For within this fence he thinks that he is safe from love. Identifying with its safety, he regards himself as what his safety is. How else could he be certain he remains within the body, keeping love outside? The body will not stay, yet this he sees as double safety. For the Son of God's impermanence is proof his fences work and do the task his mind assigns to them. For if his oneness still remained untouched, who could attack and who could be attacked? Who could be victor? Who could be his prey? Who could be victim? Who the murderer? And if he did not die, what proof is there that God's eternal Son can be destroyed? The body is a dream. Like other dreams, it sometimes seems to picture happiness, but can quite suddenly revert to fear where every dream is born. For only love creates in truth, and truth can never fear. Made to be fearful must the body serve the purpose given it. But we can change the purpose which the body will obey by changing what we think that it is for. The body is the means by which God's Son returns to sanity. Though it was made to fence him into hell without escape, Yet has the goal of heaven been exchanged for the pursuit of hell. The Son of God extends his hand to reach his brother and to help him walk along the road with him. <laughs> There's a beautiful part of our, 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 our mission, huh? The Son of God extends his hand to reach his brother and to help him walk along the road with him. Now is the body holy. Now it serves to heal the mind that it was made to kill. You will identify with what you think will make you safe, whatever it may be. You will believe that it is one with you. Your safety lies in truth and not in lies. Love is your safety. Fear does not exist. Identify with love and you are safe. Identify with love and you are home. Identify with love and find yourself. 
And once again, on our uh, lesson, as we're sitting here on the shore of uh, Lake Lenexa in uh, Kansas, thank you all so much for joining me here today. My holy vision sees all things as pure. Father, your mind created all that is. Your spirit entered into it. Your love gave life to it. And would I look upon what you created as if it could be made sinful? I would not perceive such dark and fearful images. A madman's dream is hardly fit to be my choice. Instead of all the loveliness with which you blessed creation, all its purity, its joy, and its eternal quiet home in you. And while we still remain outside the gate of heaven, let us look on all we see through holy vision and the eyes of Christ. Let all appearances seem pure to us, that we may pass them by in innocence and walk together to our Father's house as brothers and the holy sons of God. <laughs> My holy vision sees all things as pure. My holy vision sees all things as pure. 